Hi there, and welcome back to the future of documents. I'm Holt Skinner, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. In the last video, we talked about Document AI and how it can extract structured data out of unstructured documents. In this video, we'll get started using Document AI with the Cloud Console and API with the Python client library. For the most up-to-date information, be sure to check out the documentation linked in the description. Before we start processing documents, we need to understand document AI processors. A document AI processor is an interface between the document file and a machine learning model that can be used to classify, split, parse, or analyze a document. You will have to create processor instances in your project to use document AI. This is different from how the ML APIs like vision or speech to text work. Instead, it's similar to how you'd create a VM in Compute Engine or a model instance in Vertex AI. A processor can be general, specialized, or custom. Each type is designed for a specific task, such as optical character recognition, general form parsing, classification, or parsing of specialized document types. We'll dive into the specific types later, but for now, let's walk through the process to create and test a processor in the Cloud Console. These steps will be similar for whatever processor type you're using. Let's demonstrate with an optical character recognition processor. You first need to navigate to Artificial Intelligence and Document AI. Next, click Create Processor. If you haven't already enabled the Document AI API, the console will prompt you to do this here. Select the processor type you want to create, in this case, Document OCR. You must specify a processor name and region when you create each processor. You can't change these later. Click Create. After the processor has been created, you can grab the processor ID and your project ID. You'll need both of these to access the API. Now you can upload a test document to send to the processor. The console should look something like this. You can see all of the extracted text in sections and highlight them to identify specific text. This can allow you to quickly check if the document is being processed in the way you'd expect. Now, let's explore how to use the Document AI API, allowing you to create automated scripts to handle document processing. Document AI supports a unified API endpoint. This feature offers multiple advantages. The same endpoint is used for every type of processor you create. You specify your processor by including your processor ID and project ID in the request that you send to the API. This means that you can use the same client library and authentication for every processor. Additionally, the responses use a universal document structure to simplify the development process. We'll call it the document object. It contains all the information about the raw text, layout, extracted entities, languages, etc. When calling the API, we need to decide how our application will process documents. Document AI supports both online and batch processing. These work similarly to Vertex AI online and batch prediction. Online processing is primarily for low latency use cases, such as where the user is waiting for results. Batch processing is designed to handle larger files or multiple documents at once. The steps for making Document AI API calls are basically the same for both online and batch calls, but the exact code will be slightly different. First, you should create a service account for your Document AI application. You need to grant the service account the Document AI API user role. After creating your service account, you can select the appropriate client library for your application and install it. For today's examples, we will use the Python client library. Now, let's take a look at some code for online processing. You can read more about these examples in the code lab linked in the description. First, we need to define variables for values needed by Document AI. We need the project ID, location, processor ID, a path to a local file, and the MIME type of the file. Next, we'll look at the key steps for making a request. The API works the exact same way for any processor type. The only differences will be the processor ID and how you use the data afterwards. First, we need to configure the processor client. Then, construct the request, which contains the processor information and base64 encoded file. Next, we make a request to the API. And then we can analyze the output from the API in our document object. Now, let's take a look at batch processing. It's a little more complicated, but you can process larger documents and multiple files in a single API call. The biggest difference is that the input and output files are stored in Google Cloud storage buckets, and the API calls are processed asynchronously. This works the exact same way for every processor type. 
The code lab in the description shows how to make these requests in more detail. Let's take a look at the document object output, which contains all of the data that the processor extracted. The information within the document object can be classified into four main categories. First, we have document representation. This section contains information about the raw text that is extracted by OCR. This section also describes the physical layout of the document. Next, we have extracted data. This section describes the data that can be represented by a well-defined schema. This structured data is stored as an array inside the document entities field. Next, we have metadata. This field allows you to maintain a full revision history of the changes made to the document. Last, we have annotations. This field is mainly used in the human in the loop or HITL workflow. HITL provides the ability to make corrections to existing predictions and save them in the document object. This diagram shows some fields that are supported by the document object. These fields capture the information that is extracted from the input file. Let's look at some examples. We have a sample document shown on the left with the document output shown on the right in JSON format. You can see the text field contains the raw text within the document. And the MIME type field shows that this is extracted from a PDF file. The pages field provides information about the layout and structure of the document. Looking at the same sample document, we can see that the pages field includes the page number, dimensions, and layout information. We'll return to this document object in later videos to explore other fields. We've covered quite a lot about document AI in this video. We learned about document AI processors and how to create them. We learned how to use a processor to parse a document with both online and batch processing. And we explored the document object structure so that we can get every last drop of information about our files. For detailed tutorials on how to make online and batch requests with the OCR processor, see the code labs and documentation linked in the description. In the next video, we'll look more into general processors and how we can start gathering intelligent insights from documents. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.